Hey everybody, my name is Adam. Uh, so a common question that I get, uh, especially in regards to develop mode, uh, is can you explain sort of how LightEQ's advanced uh, mode works? And uh, advanced uh, in LightEQ is a little bit different in terms of its user interface to that of the standard and basic methods. So today, I'm going to talk about the LightEQ advanced mode, how to use it, and sort of to understand the UI a little bit better to get the most out of the tool. In develop mode, I'm going to expand the LightEQ tab. LightEQ has a couple different modes via the drop down bar here. So basic, standard, and advanced. Basic splits brightness into three categories which are shadows, midtones, and highlights. Standard mode splits light into, by default, five brightening bands and five darkening bands. This gives you much more control over the spectrums of light in your image. Now advanced, which is the topic of today's video, operates identically, but in this case, it actually has 100 incremental bands for both brightening and darkening. But because that wouldn't fit in the panel here, we've actually switched up the appearance to this waveform instead. Let's just look at the waveform to start. The top of the waveform represents brightening. The light gray section that starts sort of on the left in the midtones area here and tops out at the highlights and whites. If I hover over a really bright part of my image, you'll notice that the yellow line will appear on the far right of the brightness bar. This just indicates that the selected color is very close to true white. The bottom of the waveform represents darkening. The light gray section actually starts on the right in the midtones area and tops out in shadows and blacks on the far left. If I hover over a really dark part of my image, once again, you'll notice that the yellow line will appear on the far left of the darkness bar. This indicates that the color is very close to true black. True white and true black, I'm using as kind of like shorthand terms. What I mean is that these colors have a very high or very low RGB values respectively white being 255, 255, and 255, and black being 0, 0, 0. If I left click and brighten the brights, I'll get this red indicator. Likewise, if I right click and darken the darks, I'll get that same red indicator. That red indicator means that we've either overexposed or underexposed our image. If I navigate to this show clipped icon, you can see an overlay covering our image that identifies over and underexposed parts with either red and green respectively. All of this is to say, now we know what parts of our image we're trying to avoid when we're going through the process of light EQing our image. Let's reset our image and instead brighten the shadows and darken the highlights. This is going to result in an image with less contrast, but more information in the spectrums of light. I can play around with these values as much as I want now that I understand how the information is presented. You'll notice that when I hover my mouse over the image, an up and down arrow appears next to the color picker. If I click and hold either with my left or right mouse button, you can see that I am either darkening or lightening that spectrum accordingly. I can also double click anywhere on my image to set automated white and black light EQ corrections. Thanks for watching this quick little tutorial. Uh, so that was the advanced function within develop modes light EQ tool. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just sound off in the little comment space below and I'll be sure to read those soon. Take care.